afternoon, and welcome back to another edition of Fort Wayne Up Close. You know, every time I sit here, I brag on my guests, and I tell y'all how excited I am and how lucky I am. Well, hey, I'm not going to change today because the gentleman I got on today is a gentleman that I grew up actually idolizing. You know, him as an athlete, his team as, as a team, you know, his high school team, if you ask me, who is going to win, the Indiana Pacers or Fort Wayne Southside back when he played. I'm rolling with Southside every single time. But it is my pleasure, again, my absolute pleasure to be sitting here and welcoming John Flowers to our program. Welcome, John. Johnny Flowers. Johnny You're Flowers. John. <laughs> He's John. I'm Johnny Flowers. <laughs> so I'm glad to be here. On Club JJ, <laughs> gonna try to get a million views. <laughs> but no, all jokes aside, good scene. Hey, no, we like jokes. It's great. But hey, when I talk about, I mean, you and your high school career, and I mean, that's no hyperbole. But I say, hey, I would take you guys over a professional team, uh -huh. and you know, everybody loves a big man, you know, especially when they got the skills of a little man. Uh -huh. So I mean, you look at Shaq today. What makes him popular? He can do anything somebody small can do. But we go back to you. That's exactly the same. I mean, hey, you can break dance, you high jump, hurdle, you know, you name it, you can do it. Man, talk to your high school career because you was a multi-sport star. Man, talk about that. We got a picture up right now. Show, you know, a little well, bit of your track. Well, actually, track was my favorite sport growing up. I started track before I started basketball. And... um as far as our high school, like he said, I loved our team. We had a we had a great team in high school. Um, Ron Tabron can jump off the gym. We had Scotty Farrells. He had crazy handles. But after my, I think it was my sophomore year, I got a call from um, Steve Alford and his father, and they were like, you want to go to a camp? And i never been to a camp. I didn't know what kind of camp it was. So I said, yeah, I'll go. So we went to Pennsylvania. I'm looking at Amish people <laughs> with, with wagons. So anyway, we go to Five Star Camp, and um, I'm like, wow, this is a real camp. There was a lot of great players there. One of, one of the, my roommates was, was, was Michael Jordan, right? So we ended up playing them in the, in the finals, the regular season finals of the camp, and we beat them in the regular season, so... He was hot, man. He was steaming. That's how I knew. I'm like, this dude is different. Everybody else on this team laughing, you know, having a good time. He went to this room. He was steaming. So anyway, so they put us together on the All-Star team, which I thought they should have separated us. So in the All-Star game, I think he had 21, I had 25. So at the end of the camp, they gave him – the MVP and gave me most outstanding player. So then coming back to Southside, I was all into track. So I was supposed to go play in the McDonald's game, and I let Coach Walker talk me out of doing it. I'm like, I wish I had a father like LaMelo La Ball. <laughs> the Ball father like, nah, man, my son, he going to play in this McDonald's game, you know, track, you know. It wasn't like I was going to miss the event. So I always regret playing in that game. But the, when I just said regret, you know what? I was working in Vegas at the win, and I saw Coach Knight, right? And he came up to me, and I said, Coach, you know what? I, I kind of regret leaving IU. And do you know he slapped me on the back of my head so hard and just grabbed me and put my face in his face and said, don't ever regret nothing you do in life because it had to have a meaning behind it. And I was like, wow, that was nice, you know. Even players that left the organization, he was still cool to. And I was like, being there with Knight, because I know a lot of people want to hear this. Being there with Knight, let me get my story out. Coach Knight wasn't the reason I left IU. I like Coach Knight. He liked me. My sophomore year, he said he had big plans for me. But what happened was the Morgan family, Winston Morgan, his cousins, 
took me to play in this unsanctioned tournament, and we got suspended. Remember that for like four yeah. games or what? Yeah. yeah. And they lost those games. So Coach Knight, you know, kind of put the blame on me and Winston. And I wasn't playing. And then they had Uve, you know, Blob. So he getting all the playing time. So it wasn't me leaving for Knight. It was me leaving because I wanted to play, you know what I mean? Yeah. But um, I'm telling you, man, that Winston Morgan, he going to see this too. He got me in so much trouble. <laughs> All right, now look, you <laughs> didn't you didn't you didn't jump, you didn't hit fast for a whole went, bunch I of stuff. All, I go all over the hey, place. And, and I appreciate that. You know, I know <laughs> hey, it's like you on the, on the couch for therapy. I'm right? all but, over hey, the place. <laughs> hey, I'm, I just want to I just want to go back. We go we gonna touch on some things. A, you went to five star camp, and you talking about he was uh, Michael Jordan was yeah. MVP here, and you were most outstanding. The bottom line, you guys were co MVPs of five star yeah, basketball camp. Yeah. You know, basically. When we went, when you go to camp, five star basketball camp, they have all MVPs up. Your mm -hmm. name is on the plaque mm -hmm. with Michael Jordan, co MVP. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that just speaks. Anybody has questions about how good you were, mm -hmm. that's how good he was. He was co MVP with Michael Jordan in basketball camp. The other thing you speak of, you were a McDonald's All American. <laughs> you was nominated one of the top guys in the country, as if being MVP with Michael Jordan didn't say enough. You were a McDonald's All American. And I didn't realize that you didn't play the game until the day when you just sat there. But that actually, too, speaks to you were a, a state class caliber athlete. Yo, Southside with the state, you know, all four of your years in high school, and you were there a key part. So, like you said, you let the track, the, uh, track coach talk you out of going to the McDonald's game, right. which you actually bring up an issue. We get a lot of uh, – we talk about multi-sport athletes, yeah. mm -hmm. and that's just it. A lot of coaches say, hey, you know, you missing this, you missing that. And I always tell people, I'm the type of coach, had I been the track coach, no, nah, I'll go ahead and play in that game and then let you come on back. Right. You know, you know that's, that's the thing. You got to work together. And right now we get a lot of, lot of coaches, a lot of trainers who is an either-or proposition. And it sounds like you got a little of that back then. Then. You know, which is which, which is too bad because here you are, you know, at, at sixty plus, and talk about you know a regret that you had, and that is that, right. that was that was a prestigious honor that that got taken from you. Right. All right. Now, we didn't jump to you went to IU. First off, you you said Coach Knight recruited you. Right. You was recruited by everybody in the country. Right. So what made you go to IU? Basically, the reason I went to IU is they won a national championship. They had two players. I wanted to play with the whole team, but it's two players I really wanted to play with. That was Isaiah and Landon Turner. And then Landon got in a, a, a horrific car accident where he was paralyzed, you know. Landon would probably – Landon would have been lottery pick, you know. He could have taught me a lot as far as that. And then Isaiah, as far as him being a leader of the team – and then you had Kitchell, Randy Whitman. You had they had a whole great team. And then I really want to play with Isaiah because him and Ray Tolbert reminded me of me and Virgil Wright, you know, with the lobs and all of that. And um, so I really wanted to go to Indiana. And then I w wanted to go to UNLV too, right? <laughs> so basically, the reason. People going to ask me why I'm jumping all over the place. I left UNLV, I mean, left Indiana to go UNLV. It's this. It's nothing really to do with totally basketball and getting in trouble with Winston. But, man, I'm so glad these kids get paid now. Dude, I was at IU, right? So if you miss the – the dormitory when you the the meals yeah. at the dormitory because that's where we ate. If you miss it, you're on your own. So man, I was so hungry, man. I went to 7-Eleven, dude. I only had a dollar. <laughs> the dude gave me two hot dogs, right? So I went back to the cheese machine and the uh, chili machine. I filled that up, looked like I had two cups of soup in my hand. <laughs> man, I was like, man, forget all this hunger. Dude, when I went to UNLV, <laughs> they gave us these coupon meal tickets. 
Man, I went out to eat. I had lobster. I had steaks. I had mashed potatoes. I'm like, y'all eat. Like, they said, slow down, John. You could do this every day. I said, man, I'm not used to this. So, yeah, man, I, 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 I feel that players, man, they supposed to get paid because the university, they're making so much money, so much money on, on these athletes that it is like minor league pros, I feel. Yeah, no question. I mean, right now. And I know you watched the show and you saw we kind of addressed that issue. Mm -hmm. I mean, now they got to figure out some kind of way to, you know, kind of corral it a little bit. Mm -hmm. But to your point, to our point, anybody that's ever played, you know, uh, athletics know that these kids should be getting paid because everybody else is getting paid. You right. know, um, and it, it sounds like you speaking. OK, you were at IU, strict discipline program, you know, again, uh, not not eating shouldn't be a part of it. Mm -hmm. But again, you get to Vegas, like you said, coupons, uh, carefree. They treating you almost like being a pro, wasn't it? Right. So okay. le, what he just said, I'm getting ready to expand on that right there. He said you went to IU with discipline instructor. No, <laughs> let me tell you something. When I left Indiana, I thought I was going to UNLV behind the back, throwing off the dunk audit. Man, discipline tark. We had to run like 20 hundreds, 10 fifties, up hills, 40 yard dashes in the heat, 100 degrees, right? I'm out there passed out when we go back inside at the gym, right? I'm walking to the locker room. Coach Gurr said, where are you going? I said, we're done with conditioning. He said, no, that's just a start. <laughs> now we got to do our basketball stuff, right? So we go into the gym. We doing all these defensive stance, moves, glides, all of this stuff. I promise you, I want to throw up. So this lasts for two hours, right? I was so dead tired, yo. And then this is what Tark used to say. He said, I know who been out drinking. I'm finna run the, the beer out of y'all, the alcohol out of y'all. Dude, I stopped drinking, dude. I was like, I can't, you can't endure Tark's uh, practices, dude. It's like military base. Different night is he goes one hour. It's hard, but it's one hour because he believe a, a college kid can't concentrate after an hour. They start losing attention, right? So as far as discipline and all that stuff, man, Tart, man, I was so tired from his freaking conditioning. I wanted to call Coach Knight back and say, is, is it a law? Can, <laughs> can the NCAA let a person transfer back? It was hard as that. But I regret nothing, man. My favorite coaches of all time is number one is Tark. Number two is Knight. I love Tark. I love my time there. You know, the reason I said I wish I would stay at IU is because I wanted to play on an Olympic team <laughs> with Steve. <laughs> That's funny. Now, now again, now that's funny. I get to see this side of you. And, I mean, this, uh, you know, I ain't going to say it's a pivot, mm -hmm. but I know you you have some tales, and I know Coach Knight had a way of doing things. Um, honestly, I appreciate what you said about Tark because a lot of people don't get that. But it, the running Rebels, <laughs> basically Tark said you better be in shape. We're going to be yeah. running Rebels, but you got to be in shape. They did and do. people don't, yeah, don't, 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 don't get to see that part of him. But as far as uh, as Coach Knight, I mean, some of the you know some of the tactics, uh, how he went about things verbally, uh, even physically, whatnot. Um, so you saying, I mean, it, it would is it worth it? You saying you you'd rather you pay that price uh, versus going over UNLV because there's always more than one way to skin a cat. Uh huh. Is is a lot of examples. Mm -hmm. You know, Coach K sent guys to the pros, national championships. You know, it's about discipline structure. Uh, life after athletics, mm -hmm. but he had his way of doing things. You know, he get after guys, but you know, right. in certain ways. So, can you can you weigh that for me? Okay, as far as because um, you said a lot there. You I mean you mean about going to uh, IU versus? I mean UNLV? about your time when you when you were when you were at IU, you mm -hmm. just painted a picture for folks okay. that uh, everything was good. Mm -hmm. Coach, a coach was dropping straight knowledge and discipline on you, mm -hmm. and the only reason that uh, you weren't playing was because you got in trouble. Right. But uh, as far as again, everybody knows, and it's well well documented. Right. Basketball genius. Right. But some of his tactics for motivation and things. Right. Definitely aren't acceptable by today's uh, yeah. times. Oh, so, I, I got what you said. 
I, I, I'll be honest with you. I went to IU for the wrong reasons. Because when you play basketball, you want to be happy. You know, even though they say Kobe had that stare, the Mamba material, he was happy playing basketball, right? And I got to a point I wasn't happy no more, man. I'm like, it seemed like more of a of a job, you know. You got to get up and more like, dang. I don't want to be in a situation when I say, oh, I don't even, even want to go there. Like, even in Vegas, I was a casino host, and it got to a point. I was making good money, but it got to a point like, I don't want to I don't, I'm not happy. I don't want to do this, you know. So, IU, man, I had a good time there the year and a half that I was there. And as far as Coach Knight's discipline, he kind of disciplined me different. Coach Knight was real smart. He knew sensitive people, and he knew I was real sensitive. He would scream at me and yell at me, but he knew. He, he held back on me. He held back on me a lot. I hear these other kids' stories. I'm like, nah, that wasn't me. Because he knew I was sensitive. He was like, you know, sometimes it's like, Cruz, tell John he need to do this, he need to do that. <clears throat> and then one time uh, we were in practice and I got a rebound and just took off. I thought I was at Wiser Park. <laughs> I just took off, dude. And I left from like the free throw line and dunked it. <clears throat> Coach Knight stopped practice. And he said, Flowers, why don't you run like that all the time? You're, you're a track star, but you don't run like that all the time. And let me tell you why I found out later in my years in life. Okay, I was having some heart difficulties, uh, difficulties. So I went to see a specialist. He said, what's wrong? I said, even when I play basketball, if I get too tired, I go like this, tell the coach to take me out. So I thought I wasn't in shape, but I was in shape. I had like 5% body fat, but I would always say, take me out. With Coach Knight, with Tart, take me out. And I would get shortness of breath, feel like I'm going to faint. And you know what the doctor said? Dude, you have heart disease. He said, that's why you kept getting tired, feel like you was fainting. You have serious heart disease. <clears throat> then I started thinking about limb bias. Jeep Jackson, uh, the football player that that passed out yeah. um, in the NFL game, and also the guy from Loyola Mary, my uh, Hank. So when, when did you find that? Find so out? I found was? this that I had heart disease like six years ago. So I went mm. through, whew, I went to like three different procedures. I'm getting better now, and like the doctor said, he said. Dude, he said the college doctors aren't heart specialists. So if they see you doing good on the treadmill and on all of this, your EKG look fine, they let you go. It's not their fault. He said, but now colleges have heart doctors. Okay. In, in NBA, too, because they wouldn't let um, a certain player play uh, for the New Jersey Nets. He used to play for Portland, the big man. He had a heart issue when they wouldn't let him play. But uh yeah, man, so I'm glad now that I I, I I saw that I had that problem and my father died at 47, right? Yeah. My senior year at UNLV. Before he died, I was averaging 14 points, 10 rebounds, looking at the NBA chart. Ooh. Second round, ooh, third round one day. Ooh, da, da, da. Then when my father died, I had to come back to Fort Wayne for the funeral. So I stayed for the funeral, and then I stayed another week, uh, yada, yada. So when I come back, they on a winning streak, right? So Coach Tark, they're on a winning streak, and he's trying to get me back into the flow. So it was like, dude, your father just died. Your head is not in the right area. I'm like, wow, my father had to die on my senior year when I'm having my greatest year. But whatever, you know, God has things happening for a reason. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And you, I mean, you bounced back. You got, got drafted, Sacramento yeah, King. Yeah, I got so, drafted. I mean, you, you still, I mean, you had your shot. Yeah. And uh, you, you you went to training camp with the Kings. Uh -huh. uh, things didn't work out. Right. 
talk to us about overseas and playing professionally, all the different places that you've been. Talk to us about that. Right. Like, I I, I, I could have went to the Sacramento Kings uh, Summer League, but um, seriously, I started thinking about it, and I was like, wow, I could see the world and get paid for it. I always want to see the world. I, I love to travel, right? So... I went to Israel, and my mother was kind of scared. She was like, oh, my, they're fighting over there. <laughs> and it wasn't like it is right now with the war and stuff when I went in 86. It was nice, man. They gave me my apartment, and I looked at the beach. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> I was in Haifa, Israel, man. It's like a resort town, going to the beach every day. And um, so I second year, I was like, oh, man, I, I'm going to try out for the NBA again. So I went to summer camp, didn't make it. And then Kenny Barlow came to Israel. I'm like, dude, you ain't going to play for the Lakers? He's like, no, nah, man, after all these taxes, I'm making more money over here. <laughs> and with my rookie contract, if I would have made it with all the taxes, I made way more overseas. So I enjoyed it. And, and Israel had this great coach. He was like, what was your college coaches thinking, sticking you just in the middle? Man, I was shooting threes. <laughs> I was bringing it up. I was like, they were like granddaddy LeBron, man. <laughs> he just, he he saw my ability, right? Yeah. Whereas this is what's happening, too, in a lot of high school. If a guy's 6'9", he's automatically playing center. That was in my day. Now they're letting them explore. Yeah. What I see them <laughs> playing in the NBA right now, when they're saying stretch four, me and um, uh, my buddy Mike Carter and, and another buddy Steve Ladazwa, we were doing that overseas in in the eighties. The NBA just adapted to the European games. Look, that's why Don, uh, uh, Luca yeah. is dominating because that's how they play in Europe. That's why Joker is dominating. You see, he take his threes, yeah. and they spread the floor. They play basketball like soccer. You Correct. see what spacing. I'm saying? Right spacing. Spacing. That's exactly, yeah. You yeah. just said it, Jay. Spacing. Yeah. Greg it. Yeah. Um, man, so you got to travel the world. Mm-hmm. Uh where else did you play? Tell us about your time in Venezuela. Do you play? Yeah, you played uh, with Tracy, the other one I guess, family member, fellow So away. anyway, <laughs> Tracy called me like, "Come on, man, come play with me in Venezuela." I like, cool, man. I went out to Venezuela. I go out to Venezuela, man. Tracy like Michael Jordan over there, <laughs> dude, man. I played with him. He was getting giving them sixties. I'm like, dang, dude. I'll rebound too. He's like, he was like Kobe, man. Tracy was insane. I'm like. Man, Philly, they know they need to bring him back, the Sixers. <laughs> Man, Tracy was balling out of control. I think the lowest game I've seen him score with me in Venezuela was probably 32. Wow. And the newspaper was like, that's a bad game. <laughs> Tracy was putting in work. But he was giving me the ball. I was I was getting my, my double-doubles. But, yeah, man, I love playing with Tracy. That's funny. You said that Jay Edwards went to Venezuela for a minute, too. That was the first thing. He said, man, you know, he's, they got uh, basketball cards. And he said that's uh, all they were talking about was Tracy. Crazy, it's yeah. like man. Crazy said the, the same man. thing, same thing that you said. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, how how does it feel to be, you know, for you guys that don't know, our studio is on Calhoun Street, we're right across from Southside High School. How does it feel to be back in your old neighborhood, man? I loved it. I'm like, wow, he's right across the street from my my um alma mater. So I was like, this is cool. It was a long walk from my mother's house, though. I thought it was closer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he came to us huffing and puffing, y'all. You know, and, and, and let you know behind the scenes, he had called us during the week, text us, talking about 108, 106 out, out in uh, Arizona yeah. or in Vegas. You know, now he wanted to complain. We, I think it's about 77 degrees out there. The man that got tired. Um Talk to us about Wiser Park. We've touched on this again on our show. Talk okay. to us about back in the day. What was it like playing at Wiser? Give give somebody what it was like playing at Wiser. Paint well, a picture. Wiser Park was, to me, the Rucker League of Fort Wayne. The best of the best. The first person I ever saw, my first day, I'll never forget my first day going to Wiser Park. And I saw these two dudes. It was Button Hill and Alonzo Craig. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm never going to get on the court with brothers like that. Then I seen Jim Singleton. 
<laughs> muddy waters, yeah. shooting it to the sky, coming down, not even touching the rim. Just you just hear the chain, right? Man, I wish we had footage, man. <laughs> they don't even know. You had Donnie and Ronnie Young, man. You had freaking all stars on the fence waiting to play, dude. Cause you didn't want to lose. Cause if you lose, you Somebody got to pick you up, and then Bodie will say, I want South Side, South Side. That's me, South Side. I ain't have to wait. Me and Chase was talking about, man, we're thinking about having a, 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 a Wiser Park legend reunion. Oh, man. All the guys that played at Wiser Park. That would be nice, wouldn't it? It would. That would be great. That would be great. <laughs> While you're on it, give me, the, give me the top five Wiser Park legends that never played in high school or college. Give me five. Give me five to roll off the top of your head. Oops. Oh, okay. Five that never played, but they all play high school. Okay, that's why. I get. Okay, never play high school or college. Nope, never play high. Just okay, give, give me your top five. Just give me your top five. Who you think? You gotta say Turd. Okay, there we go. You gotta say, did Mike Kaiser play high school? Yeah, he was shooting at that. So he <laughs> played high school. So you gotta go Turd. You gotta go. Oh, Willie Bryant, but he played high school, right? He was on teams, but he I would I would qualify with Willie him. Bryant. Larry Tinker, Larry T- Sky. <laughs> you can't leave him <laughs> off. Larry Tinker, that was Sky. All you just saw was his bottom of his gym shoes when he jumped. <laughs> I like, dang, that name, brother Sky. You know he can get up. And let me see. Oh man, my 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 man. But did Kalen Kelso did play? Because he was good in baseball. Him and Donald Seals. Yeah. So if they didn't play baseball, you would have to put them on there. Yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. And that's, and that's yeah. the thing. Some some guys, you know. And I gotta put Bodie on there. That's my guy. Bodie, I'm putting him in category of GM. He's the world's GM, best GM. That's he my gonna guy. pick a team. He'll catch somebody <laughs> in a minute. Hey, shout out to Bo. Hey, Bo, hey, if you're oh, listening, he's a legend. yes, he is. Man, I love Bodie this day. You know. But the bottom line is, I mean, oh, you got to put Virgil Wright on there too with the crazy Virg. handles. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, Virgil High School legend and all too. the Kazi brothers, all the Hunter <laughs> brothers. Man, I can go on and yeah. on and on. Ron Tabor, Urban Harrison, man. Man, you put an all-star game of four, uh, Wiser Park, you can probably just go any city and hold your own. Yeah. yeah you know, you know uh, we talk about it all the time. And had AAU been on the scene like it is nowadays no. back then, I mean, think about what Fort Wayne would be. I mean, you know, when you talk about Flint and Saginaw, I think Fort Wayne would have been, been bigger, would have been better. Um, just to, to your point, I mean, it was cats, man. Like you said, hands down, Fort Wayne has some dogs. Dude, I don't care if nobody believes when I make this statement. If they had AAU in Fort Wayne, going to Atlanta, going to Chicago, going to all these places, I would have, I would have went, I would have came out. I wasn't going to college. Yeah, no I question. was coming out, Jack. I was coming <laughs> out because the Parade magazine had listed uh, uh, Patrick Ewing, Jordan, and me. So they had to draft off potential. Like right yeah, now, yeah. they drafted off potential, potential. y'all. I was like, I'm out, yo. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that statement. I say it all the time too. I, I said it all the time. <laughs> You know, we had the air before they made the rules. Guys uh-huh. going high school to college, boom. You, 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 <laughs> I said you, James Blackman was another one. I said yeah. y'all would have hey, would have went straight high school to the pros. Out. To your point, <laughs> just off potential alone. Yeah. You know, period. Man, uh, Big Jake, it is uh like I said, been great sitting down talking to you. Uh, enjoyed our conversation today. Mm-hmm. I think you got to get some stuff off your chest. We got to uh, have a little fun. Um, you know, drop a little let knowledge. Me, you got me, one more? Go let ahead. Let me get one more last word. To everybody, I didn't get to say the main thing is that I am a born-again believer. I love Jesus Christ. All of this stuff that happened to me with my heart, my back, and everything, the Lord healed me miraculously. And he it said, if you, desire in, or if you delight in the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart. So what I did, I started delighting myself in the Lord, and he bought me the most beautiful woman ever, you, Susan Bailey. That's my covenant partner. That's my life. Everything happens for a reason, man. So thank you for having me on this show. Oh, man, that's beautiful. That's a pleasure. You know, hey, I appreciate the shout-out to the Lord, but I like the brownie points you got with wifey. That's all yeah, right. you know it, yeah. <laughs> that is all right. But, again, once again, folks, like I said, great guests. Pleasure having you all watching us. Hopefully we brought the energy. Um, something we talk about all the time, Fort Wayne people, born and raised all over the world, all over the United States. 
different positions, different uh, professional sports. Fort Wayne, we everywhere. And any kid that's out there listening, hey, you go to course, listen to people that's guiding you, it could be you one day. With that note, we're out of here. Till next time, peace. <laughs>